is September 8th. And well, you know what I'm doing here. I'm going to test my downspout and see what's going to come down in our rain. Wow, that's deep in. I'm going to take this out of the bag because it's too hard to read. Just leave it sitting on the bag to protect it. Well, we definitely got screaming hot rain here in eastern Ontario this morning. Just broke all my old records. I have an umbrella over me, the guy you're in the flip cam, so... I can't even figure out how many times background this is here. I'll, I'll leave it in my description when I upload this video. I'll have to do the math on this. I've never seen it go this high. Point seven seven four. And this isn't the start of the rainstorm, it's probably been raining for about an hour. So I'm just as surprised as you are to see this. We have seen docks, boats, even refrigerators wash up on the Pacific coast, all debris from the Japanese tsunami. But the worst is yet to come, and experts say northwest waters could be jammed with tsunami debris as soon as next month. 500,000 tons of it. It's going to be a terrible thing if it does start coming ashore. Just so enormous that we just, it's going to take everybody... And that retired oceanographer says the debris in, is now 800 miles off of our shores. He says he's hearing from tuna fishermen who've had school buses and houses tear up their nets. The big problem, the state doesn't have the money to deal with it, and they're relying on volunteers to pick up what they can. The Fukushima accident prompted people in Japan to rethink their dependence on nuclear energy. They've held discussions, protests, and public forums about how they should power their country. The dialogue continued Thursday in Tokyo at an international conference on renewable energy. NHK World's Shia Yamagishi takes us there. Japanese IT tycoon Masayoshi Son has been the driving force behind this symposium. Son is the president of the mobile phone company SoftBank. His foundation organized the meeting. He's been calling for Japan to replace nuclear power with renewable energy since the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Japan has enough technical ability to use natural energy and has resources for wind, solar, geothermal and hydropower generation. About 600 people attended the symposium, including researchers, members of the business sector, and the representatives of NGOs. The natural energy market is said to have growth potential, so I came to gather the latest information. I want to learn more about renewable energy and whether it's possible to use it to replace nuclear power. 
It is possible, as officials from countries such as Germany and Denmark showed. They talked about how they developed renewables in their countries. At another session, participants from Asian nations, such as South Korea and Mongolia, exchanged opinions on how countries in the region could benefit from an international grid to trade electricity. East Asia is already connected by undersea communication cable networks. This shows the supergrid is not an impossible scenario. Japan has been slow to expand its renewable energy sector. Before the Fukushima accident, nuclear power provided about 30% of the country's electricity. Renewables accounted for around 10%. The Japanese government is aiming to increase the supply of renewables so that they provide more than 25% of the country's electricity by 2030. National Policy Minister Motohisa Furukawa spoke at the symposium about what he called a green energy revolution. We must create a new society with an aim to stop depending on nuclear power, which poses a risk of serious accidents that can force people to stay away from their homes for years. A recent poll suggested more than half of Japanese agree and want their government to abandon nuclear power. If the government invests in the necessary technology, the timing could be right for the new age of renewables. It involves children enjoying a ride in a hot air balloon from which they can see how their hometown is recovering from last year's earthquake and tsunami. It's their way to commemorate the one and a half year anniversary next week. A Tokyo-based volunteer group organized the event in Rikuzen, Takata City, one of the hardest hit areas. The children and their parents gathered at the playground of a local elementary school and slowly and carefully climbed into the basket. As the balloon rose to 15 meters, children were able to take in the panorama of their hometown and see the changes. It was great fun. People looked so small. The hills were beautiful. There's now less debris. The volunteer group says it will hold another such event next year so that the children can see from above the reconstruction of their town. When people fled areas around the Fukushima nuclear power plant after last year's accident, many were forced to leave their pets behind. Now more than 30% say they want to retrieve their animals. After the accident, officials from the Environment Ministry and Fukushima Prefecture picked up about 750 dogs and cats left in the no-go zone. They've been kept at pet facilities. The Ministry recently asked about 1,000 former pet owners whether they would like to bring their animals home. 330 people said yes. Others replied that they cannot afford to keep pets while living in shelters. The Ministry hopes to begin returning the pets to their owners soon. A number of stray animals still remain in the no-go zone. Ministry officials began picking up those pets on Friday. It expects the work will continue until early October.